I'm sure for a lot of you out there, this little box is quite familiar. And for those of you who don't know, this is the Post Fly Box. And back in the day, back when I was just a wee lad, I used to get these in the mail every month. And it was, it was the best time. It was so much fun. But I really haven't ordered them in a couple of years and a lot has changed, let me tell you. Postfly has these really cool like one-off signature like packs you can just order. And on top of that, they've got these new Mondo Guide Series boxes. I mean, these things are packed. This is, this is wild. But that is what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna take the Guide Series box out into the field and we're gonna try and complete the slam. For those of you who are a little bit confused as to what the slam might be, we have a long drive and a long day ahead of us, so don't even sweat it. I'll get into the explanation of it all later. Let's hit the road. And here we go, folks. This is the official scorecard of the Post Flybox Slam. And as you can see, we've got a nice set of flies. We have a fair mix of nymphs, dry flies, and we actually have one streamer. So. I like this set of flies. This is going to be a fun day. However, it should be noted we've got a couple conditions stacked up against us. First and foremost, this is late fall in the backcountry. So things are going to be cold and temps have been dropping pretty dramatically. On top of that, it should be right around peak brown trout spawn. So we're going to have the majority of the fish in the watershed uh, thinking about other things, not so much eating. <laughs> and the final nail in the coffin is, the forecast says, a bluebird sky. Now, these aren't the best conditions to be dealing with when trying a new set of flies in a new location, but that's just the name of the game. We're gonna give it our best go and yeah, try and complete this slam. So hopefully the way this video is gonna break down makes a little bit more sense. And I'll make sure to keep a running tally up top of the flies we're using and how we're doing. And throughout the day, we'll check in and out, see the, the progress on the slam. But as you might be able to tell, we are high up. We are in Colorado on a tailwater section of a kind of tiny reservoir. I've never fished it before. This is brand new water. So I don't know, I don't know how we're gonna piece a bite together, but fingers crossed we can make something happen as the sun starts to come up. So let's get in there. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is our first riffle muncher of the day, and that means the skunk is off. I can at least hang my hat knowing we didn't get skunked on this very late fall adventure. Woo! Well, for the first fish of the day, I can be very happy with that. Let's get this guy back. See you, buddy. For those of you who have been here before, you know the deal. I'm running two rods. For those of you that are new, I am a, I'm big on flexibility. So on my, I would say my lighter setup, I have a really shallow static dry dropper. And yeah, it's a little bit late in the season to be throwing a dry dropper. I'm not too confident I'll get an actual dry fly bite. Fingers crossed, maybe in the afternoon. But as of right now, I'm more so using it as a shallow nymphing rig. And that is exactly what that guy keyed in on. High up in a riffle, I mean, that's like textbook. So we're gonna one, two switcheroo, check this boy off the list and keep on moving on. This is a good sign. Go. 
yes. Well, there you have it. That is numero dos on the board off the dirty Copper J. Copper Johns are seriously one of my favorite confidence patterns. I've fished them time and time again. And especially in this like late fall, early winter period, they do so, so well. But we gotta let this guy go and keep on moving down this slam. This is a, this is a good sign, I'm, I'm liking this. So that fish came off my second rod. And on the second rod, I'm using a New Zealand strike indicator, really, really shallow. This tailwater, it's a tiny tailwater. So there's not much in the way of deep pools as of right now. And we're almost, we're almost towards the reservoir. So I'm thinking shallow is the play. So it's always good to have a couple different looks. And yeah, we got the dry dropper and now we got the New Zealand strike indicator. So I'm digging it. It's good, good to be flexible. <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, that is another beautiful little brownie brown. You gotta love that. On the dry dropper, Woo. and he's back. <laughs> See ya, buddy. Oh man, that is that is so sweet. You know, this is kind of our first deeper hole, and I ran it between two rocks, and as I was raising it up to cast again, he came up and just bop. So sometimes when you're raising those nymphs out of the water, for whatever reason, those fish, they, uh, <laughs> they dig it, they key into it, so. Cool, well, we'll keep on doing the one-two switcheroo and move on upstream, this is fun. It was pretty clear to see that this tailwater section, it was in full spawn. There were brown trout almost in every run on the reds, really getting after it. And I will say it was nice getting to catch the pre or post spawners that we did. That was a lot of fun, but this is, this is a tough time to be out in the water. Cause as you can see, there are four or five pretty nice sized brown trout that are much more concerned about passing on the next generation of little wild brownies than yeah, eating my nymph. So it was just cool to sit back and watch and see how these browns interact. It's quite a wild experience seeing them doing their thing. As you can see and here, we are back at the reservoir. Our tailwater section is complete. And so it's time to find some greener pastures. And that's gonna come in the form of a freestone stream all the way at the other end of the reservoir. So I've got a decent amount of hiking, maybe some snacking, the midday festivities, you know the deal. But while I do that, I think this would be a perfect time to go over the scorecard. So what worked, what didn't, where we're sitting as far as flies used and then caught, maybe looks, bites, blah, 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 you get the point. So future Mike, take it away. Now, of course, at first glance, this does not look all that impressive, but just wait, I'm gonna convince you of this because given our circumstances, the cold temps, the spawning fish, and the clear sky, I mean, this was tough fishing and for a place we've never been before, I am so happy with this. To get one on the pheasant tail, the Spanish bullet, and that, psh, that dirty copper jay, I mean, come on. And realistically, we weren't all that far off from completing this slam. I mean, we had hits on the rainbow nymph, we had a real solid bite on that purple haze, and more than a few follows with that tungsten bugger. So you add up a couple nice hook sets and maybe uh, take out the user error of this equation and we are right in the game. And 
given the conditions, the cold temps, the spawning fish and the clear skies. I mean, I'm just amazed we got on the fish that we did. So taking all that into consideration, things were looking pretty good because we still had plan B, C and D in the pocket. But little did I know, we were only gonna hold one more fish the entire day. And that one, we weren't even gonna actually catch. As we started to make our way around the other side of the reservoir, something flashy caught my eye at the base of the spillway. And I saw a trout and it had been hooked, broken off, hook and leader still attached. And that leader was pinned between two rocks. My man was down so bad. Luckily, we were able to get him unhooked, back in the water, revived for a second, and then he shot off. I was so surprised how strong this fish was after being in a pretty sticky situation. But with our one good deed clocked in for the day, it was time to make our way to plan B, that freestone. But uh, yeah, little did I know that the B in plan B stood for bust because this this freestone section coming into the reservoir, it was cold, it was iced over, and it looked so dead. There was no fish in there. So with a few more spots to check, I thought no big deal. We went back to the truck and we made our way south to New Mexico. And there was a few spots, let's just call them plan C and D, down in New Mexico that I had never been to, but I was close enough and willing to make the risk to go check. And I think this is a prime example of paper versus practice. And what I mean by that is that we read in books and on the internet of, yeah, these plans, let's just say C and D, <laughs> having fish and being a robust fishery. And when we got there, man, bad intel sunk the ship. Things were dry, things were low, and it just looked like a really rough creek with, yeah, no trout swimming in there. So definitely not the day we had hoped for, but how would you know unless you went out and just got after it? I mean, that's just kind of part of the game. So I'm more than satisfied with the fish that we caught, the new country we saw, and on top of that, this epic Brazos sunset. I mean, that's the cherry on top, folks. Well, hi, howdy. How are you out there? <laughs> Thank you so much for sticking around for this kind of uh, grinder session. And I will say, you can look at a day like today as either half full or half empty. And in a lot of ways, you think of the hours on the road and the miles on the trail for a couple of fish. I mean, that that's rough. <laughs> but the flip side of that is you can think we got to see brand new country, fish brand new streams, and most importantly, try new tactics and new flies. And, you know, <laughs> days like today are tough, but it's all part of the game and it's all about learning and, you know, building up those experiences for maybe the next time. But while I've got you here, I'm gonna try and wrap this video up, tie, tie a nice bow on this sucker, and talk to you again about Postfly. Like I mentioned earlier, Postfly sent over this guide box, and, they gave me some stuff they'd like me to say, but I'm gonna shoot you straight up here. And I'm gonna give you kind of my honest opinion about a box like this. And for you new anglers especially, I think these boxes have an extreme amount of value to them. And I, I mean this wholeheartedly because back in the day, like I'd mentioned, I used to get these all the time. And not only was it just such a fun time of the month to get these boxes, cause yeah, you get a little present in the mail, <laughs> a little Santa Claus drop in the middle of July, but these boxes would expose me to new patterns. We're talking dry flies, nymphs, and streamers, and all those being season specific. So if you're getting a winter box, you'd have winter flies, summer box, summer flies. And this is a really good way for me as a new fly angler to build up my repertoire of flies. So I could go through my boxes depending on the situation and I could have some really nice yeah, offerings depending on the situation. Because man, I can't tell you how many times there'd be one specific run with a really picky fish only eating this little pattern. and. And you go through your boxes, you're rummaging around, you can't find anything, and then all of a sudden, like, like it was meant to be, oh, the crystal midge from the January box, tie that sucker on, and boom, it saves the day. And You know, for you experienced anglers out there, you folks who have been around the block a time or two, 
something like this could be, yeah, it could be cool, but it might be a bit too much. And I understand that because sometimes I feel the same sentiment. I've got so much gear, I've got so many flies, and it's, yeah, it's just like, it's an extra thing. But what this box offers to you more experienced folks out there, it offers a challenge. The slam, like we tried today. <laughs> and I get stuck in my ways in, in more ways than just fishing, but especially with fishing, I get stuck using the same tactics, the same approaches, and the same flies. My bread and butter, I mean, it works, so why would I, you know, why would I go off the, go off the game plan here? But what this post fly box offers is it, it, it offers you a chance to be bad at something again. It offers you a chance to try something new, to learn, to use different tactics, to use different flies, to try and yeah, get those same results. And yeah, even though our scorecard didn't really represent, yeah, the, the most perfect of outings, we still got to learn. And I think that's the most important part. So. For those of you out there who have stuck around and are interested in getting, getting your paws on a box like this, well, I've got two things for you. First and foremost would be the Fly All Season Instagram. Go over there right now and check out one of the most recent posts. We are doing a giveaway. So everything in this box, I mean, this loaded, fat son of a gun full of awesome gear, I'm giving it away to one of y'all out there. So go over, tag some of your fishy friends, and yeah, fingers crossed you can get on this awesome guide box. And oh, by the way, it will be done, the giveaway will be done at uh, this time right here. Well, through the movie magic. But if you guys are not feeling too lucky and maybe you're interested in other boxes, there's warm water, there's salmon, and there's fly tying all on top of the classic trout boxes. I've got, I got a little, little cheeky present for y'all. Use code all season 10 for 10 bucks off your first box. That's 10 bucks off of an already pretty value stacked box. And so, yeah, that's a really sweet deal. And I wonder if I could use my code to get 10 bucks off. You know what? I'm gonna check and see if I can use my own offer code. <laughs> and so, folks, I'm gonna scoop. So, until next time, wherever you find yourself, be it Northern New Mexico, Southern Colorado, I sure hope you're keeping those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines.